Hello guys and welcome to another Car Expos video. Mercedes 2006 Mercedes CLK 320 diesel, common rail. I'm playing is engine lights is on and leap mode. So it doesn't rev up anything over 3,000, 2,000 revs. Lights is on. So let's see what's going on. There we go. Two five thirteen dash one stored and current. Check the components, M55, inlet port, shut off motor, position, positioner signals, fault. I took a picture of that. Try to clear. Ignition off. 10 seconds. Ignition on. Yeah, so the fault is there at all times, it comes back straight away. So the engine again. Yeah, it's limited to 3000 revs. It's still, the engine light is not on, but I'm sure it will come back. Still shows stored in current. All right, so let's check this inlet port shut off motor, which is in a, as far as I know, is in a really difficult place to, to get to. So, well, let's see what we're gonna do. All right, so the engine is on, no lights. I'm gonna do one more thing here ignition is on, active test. So we have the inlet port shut off motor here, M55. So switch ignition on, F3, F3 for open, F4 for closed. Should be able to hear the linkage of the intake port shut off move. So let's do that. Let's see if we can hear something. So the intake and the motor is going to be just underneath the turbo here. Let's see if we can hear something. Right, press OK. F3, let's see if we can hear it, something. I can't hear anything. Let's press F4. Oh, I heard something this time. Let's press F3 again. Nothing. And I couldn't hear nothing this time, so I think what I'm going to do quick look into the, the wire diagram and maybe just remove the, uh, the intake pipes here and possibly we should be able to see the motor a little bit better down there. I'm not quite sure yet, but let's try that. Right, so looking to the wire diagrams here, it seems like so we have a ground pin one power which is shared between the EGR steering assist column EGR valve and turbocharger and it's fused fuses F54 seven and a half amps on the main relay and then we've got the F6 60 amp as well Right, so because I don't have any other faults for EGR or anything else, I think we probably have a good power, 12 volts here. The ground, obviously I have to get to the sensor to test that. And then pin three, we have the signal. Righty. So 
So I think the next step now is, is try to remove those intake pipes and try to get to that motor. I think that's gonna be my next step. connector there that we can see all right and we've got the gray wire there for the signal so probably gonna do some testing now with the engine ignition on righty so now we can see the flaps well at least at least the gear is a little bit better the linkage you can see it there, you can see there on the right as well. So I'm gonna activate the swirl flap activator again, and then let's see if that's gonna move. Okay, any movement, any noise. Right, I'm gonna leave it right there, activating now. So active, open, nothing happens. We're gonna try to close now. nothing nothing happens so i've got test powers and grounds now i've got my my probe here on a brown wire which is ground test light connected to to power let's see if we the light lights up so we've got good ground then the middle wire which is kind of like green and red so if we've got good power in there let's move this get ground in here that's power it lights up whoops so power is good now I'm gonna connect the signal wire, which is the gray. All right, so we've got signal there. Okay, so that's open position. Hold on. Let me start this again. Open position, let me close it. Yeah, the signal seems to be working. Open. I've got trigger here. Oh, it's triggered there already. Close it. Open. Close it. You can see some drops sometimes. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because the motor is not working. Let's close, open. There we go. So you can see that it's working. Now I'm gonna check the plug. Oh, the connect seems quite clean. No signs of oil inside or damage. It's pretty good. Putting that back in, I heard lots of noises. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear let me stop this action here. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear, but I heard lots of noises going on. It's like the motor is moving, it tries to move. So I think there's something stuck in here. Something not quite right, stuck. The motor tried, tried to move. Right, oh. 
I feel there's something stuck here, the linkage. It's something, it's not quite right. So I'm gonna try to remove this motor. Let's see how it goes. Seems quite, you can only see one fixing and obviously we have to disconnect from the, from the linkage. Not much room to work with. Let's see how we get on. Right guys, next day, uh, I had my head down yesterday. Take the turbo out, take the, our actuator um, to order the parts because I want to get this car back on the road. So oh, super easy to remove this turbo. I'll show everything when I'm putting it back. But there's one more test. If you have this problem, there's one more test that we can do to confirm that our circuit is all good. Um, as you could see, if I was plugging this motor, you could actually hear some noises. So I believe I believe what's happening there is there's a problem with the gears inside here. Very, very easy to see what happened here. Straight away you can see that transistor there exploded and the smell <laughs> smell burnt so there you go guys I'm not I'm not quite sure if it was oil that caused that or there's definitely oil intrusion here and um, I don't know if I can show you I think I can show you there but there's a little hole right there on the plug and I think it was just I mean it got inside here but that's our problem to open this, I try to be gentle with it, and it just breaks. It's like glue together. So I just use the Dremel. So there's nothing wrong with the cogs. They are all good. That transistor there was probably, you know, affecting the position of the the motor itself, and um, and it failed. Yeah, if you if you have come across this problem before, you're probably aware. Uh, a lot of people bypass this this system or or put resistor 4.7k resistor between uh, power and signal so that's what I'm going to do today just to make sure we have we have good wire the wiring to the, the ECU is all good so I've got my DK box here set up to 4.7k and I'm going to show you that on a on this scanner now if we're going to get rid of the faults or not and then we can oh, I'm pretty sure um, I've got a new motor anyway but it's, it's the test that I did yesterday um, this motor is, is basically gone so alright guys change of plans this battery is really really low it kind of recovers back up, but this car is not driven very much. I did try to charge it yesterday, but as soon as we put the ignition on, it goes down to like 7 volts. So we're not going to be able to do that, but I did it yesterday before the battery was dead. So basically, as you probably know, the middle pin, the, the green and red, and the, the one on the left, which is the grey one. So 4.7k, I, I use the DK box here and obviously my fault's gone so i know the circuit is good but i'm not going to be able to show you here because the batteries i need to get a, a battery support unit but they are so so expensive um i'm trying to save some money to get um the gys one um i didn't want to buy it like a chinese version because there's so many bad reviews online but but that's how it goes sometimes <clears throat> Uh, at some point to get battery support units this car was really needed if you want to do your testing properly you, you will need to have a battery support unit um, actually one of the times when i was um, diagnosing the car yesterday and i came to the conclusion there was the motor i unplugged the motor completely the, the actuator for the swell flap and i didn't have no faults and i thought whoa this is strange and then i looked at the battery it was just under 10 volts uh, you know so it can get caught there make sure your battery is always supported and fully charged for any diagnose uh, to diagnose a car otherwise yeah you could could uh, 
it could be tricky but anyway i did that yesterday and it worked you know 4.7k into the 12 volts and the signal and i had no faults so hunky dory as soon as i unplugged it i unhooked the di um the gk box the fault came back so i know it's the motor i will go through the process now the fitting the new motor i tell you what i've got here so i went and bought yesterday bought a bunch of stuff that's needed so if you can see here you have this little um I don't know how to call this, but they had this little plastic things here. One of them broke um, when I was, I was removing it and the other one didn't. The other one is all good. Uh, I guess it just get better with the heat and everything else, but they're really cheap, £1.90. And I've got all the gasket here for the exhaust side, um, the oil inlet and outlet. Um, or the oil ports and all the problem with this car yesterday i couldn't stop like oil coming out from this connector here there's a little hole there and i guess that pipe the intake pipe just been leaking oil here through this rubber ring on the top of the motor managed to get into the motor so and it damaged something inside so i got all the, the rubber seals as well all the gaskets the new Small flap, flap actuator, brand new, all from Mercedes. And um, yeah, just gonna show you how to fit it now. Unfortunately, yeah, this battery is not very good, so I apologize about that, but um, at least you know what you can do. Right, so I'm gonna crack on and I'll show you how to fit everything back. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna remove the other clip here. Just press those two tabs. And it should pop out. Yeah, it's released now. Just need to pull, pull out. And there we go. It's going to fit one here. Well, it's going to fit two here. See, they are super brittle now. Go over the, the little ball joints there. And it should click together. There we go. So the motor sits like this one two three fixings and that goes inside the the arm here clicks into place happy days ready to go i hope you guys can see that there's another arm there uh, this arm for, i don't know if i mentioned but both so flaps are moving freely Yeah, so just right there. Just gonna get another clip. When I went to get these parts from uh, Mercedes yesterday, I had everything on the shelf. And uh, they said they do this job quite often. The motor, uh, obviously the oil cooler goes quite often in this car. All right, so there we go. So there's a new clip there. So the oil cooler is just underneath there. And uh, it's a common issue with this car. So it had every, everything in stock. All right, new motor. This is going to be the tricky bit. Okay, let's see what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, the camera's in the way, guys. You can't see anything. So I'm just going to connect the two arms. You get the gist. Let me remove the camera out of the way. All right, guys. I managed to put one of the clips in. There we go. So just there, super, super fiddly. Took me absolute ages. And second one here. So, so close to getting to the arm there. Again, super, super fiddly. It's taking me ages, but uh, we're getting somewhere. Right, so finally in. All right, so that's in position there. And you can see one arm over there one arm this side and it's gonna move the motor and then you're gonna see it moving 
There you go. The other one. So that's perfect there. Now, what I need to do again, what I did, I took it all off again. And um, I left this last one to put it last. Um, you know, this front one here to put it last because otherwise it wouldn't, it wouldn't go on. It was pretty difficult to get to the other ones, this at the front. So I put one bolt here, E10, and another bolt there, another E10. So it's fixed in place now. Now we're gonna go onto the turbo. And turbo, you've got basically one bolt here, one bolt there. Two bolts there for the bracket, those two. And then you're gonna have one here going to the, I believe it's the EGR, EGR pipe. Okay. Then we got the exhaust side. And I've got all new gaskets for it. Yeah, so three bolts there, three bolts there. And then one at the back of the turbo for another pipe, but this is gonna go on last. So I'm just gonna get the new gaskets. Right, that's it, that's on as well. This one for the turbo. So that's in position, lovely. Just need one gasket here for the EGR. Which is this one. And then this last one. Goes, goes at the back here, which we're gonna do it last. A bit of a wiggle that needs to be done again. Let's get this in. Eventually, it should fall into place. bit tight to be honest but it came out so like this there we go ah oh, there we go beautiful everything seems to line up so there you go as you can see here so these are the oil ports so 2 t 45 here and then the tube at the bottom there for the brackets. There's another one there. I need to put the gasket here for the for this pipe. For the, I believe it's the EGR pipe. And then put the six bolts for the exhaust. And that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna get the trucks back for this turbo, and uh, we continue. So far, so good. Right, so put the bolts in. So the T45 bolt is there. I put two for the brackets at the bottom there. And the EGR is in place as well. I'm gonna tighten up this two oil first. So it's 20 Newton meter then it's in two stages. So 20 Newton meter and then 60 degrees. Try to do as even and evenly as I can. That's twenty. That's twenty. All right, so I put some marks there for my sixty degrees. So I've got my 60 degrees there, 60 degrees there. Thank you, Dory. So I'm gonna do the brackets now. For the brackets, we have 16 newton, newton meters. So that's next. Well, let me show you what I want to do. Oh, actually. There's no point to have a camera there because I can't film anything. So 16 newton meter for the brackets, the exhaust. 
20 newton meter and then we've got an elbow afterwards which is 20 newton meters as well so we just done the turbo pedestal to the actual turbo so 20 newton meter plus 60 degrees second, second stage right, 16 newton meter for the brackets Go, 16. The torque for this one is 10 newton meter. It's not a lot, plus one quarter. Obviously, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the torque wrenching here. Let me try. Doubt it. Yeah, no, not gonna be able to get the other side. Just gonna do it by feel. Feels like it's okay there to me. Now we've got the exhaust. I feel the little elbow at the back there. That clump went really easy. New gasket. Uh, it comes with these clips. Clips in place. So holds in place so while you're fitting everything so it doesn't fall off not sure if i'm gonna if i have to remove those clips i, I will I, I don't know if it's just to keep in position while you're working on it or you can leave it but i'm gonna remove it that is it now i connected the actuator here for the turbo i connected the actuator for the swirl flaps and um, i can film now on the front quite easily it's not much else to do now, to be honest with you. It's just a few, few pipes. When it goes in here, left a little bit loose because I need a little bit of slack here to be able to put that pipe, pipe in place here. The oil filter can go back in if we can. There's, there you go. And uh, yeah, it's going really well. everything oh this code because the battery was flat basically really need to get a battery uh, support unit Now I've got to cycle the ignition a couple times because I disconnected the, the diesel filter. So do that for about 10-15 seconds. And then once more. So let me have a, make sure there's nothing. Dropping it away. I started first time. Let's let it idle for a bit. Any faults at all? 
seems to be all good. Right, no force detected. Just gonna either check for any leaks at all. Seems to be all dry. All right, it's all good. All right, so no faults to report. Fantastic. Now just idly nicely now. Now, as you can see, it goes over. 3,000 revs now which before wasn't let's go for a quick test drive so I left the cab running for about half an hour now and so we're gonna make sure I haven't got any leaks from the turbo oil ports it's dry so look to the other side Yeah, it's all dry nicely. That is our problem here. That was the problem here with this seal. It's all new now. Sealing really nicely. Doesn't seem to be leaking down there. Perfect. So it's all back together. I've got to put this engine cover on. There we go. So that is it. Obviously, I didn't show the test drive of the car, but like I showed in the beginning, you never used to go over 3000 revs, and now no problem whatsoever. Plenty of power. So, call it that a fix. So, there you go, guys. A couple things learned from this, uh, from this job. I do need to get a battery support unit because I couldn't do the test properly, first of all. I was looking at the faults, monitoring the fault, mon monitoring the fault with the, the scan tool and it didn't have no faults because obviously the battery went down to like under seven volts at one point. Uh, so I do need to get a battery support unit. Another thing that I had a problem with, the central lock wasn't working at the end. I did a global scan, no faults, no module. And then I went individually uh, to the front, rear sum, and I had a couple of stored faults. I cleared that and the central locking is working out. So, but that's it. I hope, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any comments, just leave it below and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.